comics. I collect them. And I know that if you're watching this, that means you probably do too. It's a great hobby and I'd say that most people probably agree. I mean, when women find out that I'm addicted to buying expensive paper that I don't even end up reading half the time, whew, dodging panties. However, I remember when I was first getting into comic books. If it wasn't for such ADHD hyperfocus, I must admit it could have been a little bit hard. Thank God for those top 10 beginner comic book collector tips on YouTube. Without those, I'd be so lost that I might even think Hulk 181 was the first appearance of Wolverine. And although those videos are great, it's all kind of been said before by people who know way more than I do. So I'm gonna give you 10 tips that are a little more niche to the hobby you may have not heard said before. This first one's just a personal preference on how I like to collect. If you've got some golden age bags and boards, you can take about six to 10 books and put them together in a run. And I like to label mine. That's just something I like to do. It makes my collection feel a little more clean. I like to organize by storyline. That's just, just, that's just how I do mine. And it's just a nice way of showing off your books. It makes them feel a little bit more tightly knit, closer together, and honestly, there's strength in numbers. Now, I know we've all done this in the past, but if you've got a thick stack of books, some comics in their bags and boards, if you go ahead and hold them like this from the side, you can actually put a small spine tick. It's very, very small, so you might not notice it the first time you do it, but if you go ahead and look at it as if you're going to submit to a CGC or CBCS or something, they're gonna notice. It's not enough to bump it down from a 9.8 because it is a non-color breaking spine tick. However, when you do put pressure on it, it does fold the book just slightly in the middle and you will get a tiny little crease on the corner. Just something to be aware of. I prefer to hold them from the tops and the bottoms. Now this is just something I found out about me and the way I like to collect, but I'd rather have one $25 book than say five $5 books. It depends on who you are as a collector and what you decide that you value. However, it's something that I wish I had found out about myself sooner because I've got long boxes upon long boxes of books that I don't care about at all. When in fact, some of my 25, 30, $40 books, which I could have been buying all along with the money I was spending on all the other bulk, give me way more joy over the long run, especially when I get to see them all the time when I wake up just like that. Isn't that cool? Bonus tip number one, get some holders, put them on the wall, they're very cool. This next tip is something I'm very, very passionate about. When you're taping together a bag and board, you want the tape to be about this size and in the middle facing downwards. That way, when you need to take it off, it comes off without a hitch. Never, ever, ever, and I say this with so much passion, never put your tape lengthways because it will rip and nobody wants that. Bonus tip number two, always take the tape all the way off of the book before you empty it out. You only ever tape pull a book once and that's when the tape hits the cover and you rip a piece of the cover off. That is, you feel like such an idiot. Just take the tape off, it's one extra second, you stick it on the table, not a big deal. This next tip is actually quite complicated. Basically, I'm gonna be talking about speculation and when a book is going to spike or jump in price. I could do a whole hour long masterclass on this. It is very, very, very complicated and there's all these different factors, but essentially the raw bones of it is this. The book will spike once when the character in the book has been announced something like Comic-Con or something like that. And go boom again when the trailer drops for the movie and then boom when the movie comes out again. If you really, really want a comic, you wanna get it before the jump or after the jump. You wanna stave off that FOMO, okay? Because that is the killer of comic collectors because you'll buy a, you'll see a trailer drop and you'll think, wow, I gotta get Spider-Man. You're too late, you're already too late. You gotta wait till that movie comes out and then get it if you wanna get it at the lowest price. Of course, if you've got bags of money you just wanna blow, then just buy the book. It's your book, it's your money. If you've got a book that is a little bit dirty and you want it to get the highest grade it can at CGC, you might wanna clean it. Or if you just want the book to look its best, you might wanna invest in one of these. This is one of those extendable white erasers and it is unfathomable how much soot you can actually get off of a comic with one of these. Same thing with a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. These are the two tools that are gonna help you the most. However, be careful, because you're probably gonna destroy about five to 10 books when you first start doing this. If you go too hard, especially on the areas with color, the white parts you can be a little more rough on, but the 
areas with color, you can easily strip color off with both of these tools. So you wanna be very, very careful. I will not be held responsible for anybody who destroys their book doing this. Grading companies are inconsistent. You can get the same book graded anywhere on the nine scale, basically. If you have a 9.0, it could be a 9.8, it could be a 9.6, it could be a 9.4, it could be anything under the sun, it just won't be a 9.9. That is something I wish I knew before I started submitting. Honestly, now I'm just buying 9.6s because they're, they're, there's no difference in CGC's mind between a 9.6 and a 9.8. As a rule of thumb, variants that are only valuable because they're a variant usually don't retain their value. If a new variant comes out and you really want it, I'd wait a month or two because it'll probably go down. Sometimes there are variants that don't go down and they will go up. These are things like the one in 10 variant on all new Wolverine number 25, or so, I don't know what it is, but I'll show it right here. Those variants that are really, really good fan favorite variants, they'll hold their value, but for the most part, they're gonna go down. So just go ahead and wait if you really want it. Now this is a bit of a do as I say, not as I do type of thing, but try not to pack your boxes so tight. I mean, the grades of my books have greatly diminished just simply because I have not taken the time to actually go out and buy more boxes. I am absolutely packing these things in together. And what you'll see because of that is that a lot of my comic books actually have little rubs on the back and where the color has rubbed up against the board and it has stripped the paint. And that is called color rub. Arguably the most important tip I'm gonna tell you right now is love what you collect because honestly, there's a lot of joy to be had when you just pull them out of the box, take them out of the bag and board, flip through them, feel them, look at them, smell them even. It's just, it's a real joy. If you love what you collect, you'll never be upset that you're stuck with it. If you buy that Sonic number one that, no, that you don't care about, but you think it's gonna be worth something, then you'll look at that Sonic one and you're just gonna sit there and be like, dang, now I have a Sonic 1. Who cares? If you love Sonic 1, that's the book to buy. If you like Doctor Strange, that's the book to buy. Just liking the hobby and being interested in it. And a bonus tip I have for you, these covers from the Silver Age have a color to them that you absolutely cannot see through the bag and board, and you cannot see them in new comics either. So. If you've got a Silver Age book, take it out of the bag and just like stare at it. I mean, really, there's something to it. There's some magic there. There's some ma magnificence. You can get so caught up in the grade chasing, in the value, in the uh, keeping it pristine and everything. Take it out, look at it under some different lights and, and just value these books the way that we all do. I hope that you have learned something from this. If you haven't, let me know down in the comments. If you have, also let me know. This was a very fun video to make, so I'm glad you guys watched it all the way to the end. And if you did, thank you. Bye.